Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to have a look at the iBox Mono uh, resin 3D printer. Uh, this printer is from Quiddy, Quiddy Tech, Chinese uh, company. Uh, majority of them are as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, I've had this about four or five weeks or so now um, and it seems to be a, a decent little printer. Uh, it's well built, um, solid. Um, yeah, really pleased with it. Uh, so quick sort of uh, show round, um, I won't actually try and move, move around too much just to try and keep the camera steady but uh, down the left hand side is where you'll find the USB port so it's nice and out of the way. Uh, you've got small LCD touchscreen at, uh, at the front, um, it's got all the usual sort of stuff if you've got a, um, a resin printer already you're going to be fairly familiar with this. Um, basically you've got print menu, system and tools. Um, so you can go into tools and find your manual uh, manual movement, calibration, um, z-axis and other bits and pieces like that. System will give you information of what firmware you're on at the moment, um, which can be useful if you're uh, trying to sort out Quiddy, uh, not sorry, not Quiddy, um, Chitterbox. Um, uh, so you can get it flashed to the latest level. Um, and then you've got print menu, which is straightforward. Uh, there's nothing displayed here because I haven't got the uh, USB stick at the moment. Um, I've just um, updated the firmware so um, I need to basically reformat that so uh, I can uh, get rid of the firmware files or at least just delete them off, one of the two. Um, so it's all fairly straightforward. Um, power button is at the rear. It's fairly easy to get to. It's more towards the right hand side so you just need to reach behind and uh, you can turn it on. Um, I like the case on it. Um, it, it's hinged so it opens up and then you can get access into uh, the z-axis and uh, where the pill brake goes. So as you can see this is uh, quite a substantial um, arm on it for uh, holding the build plate. Uh, the build plate for itself is at the moment over here, so that's the, the build plate. And that measures, if I remember right, it's uh, 200, yeah, 200 millimeters by 127. So you can get a decent uh, amount of uh, models on there to get printed. And uh, the last lot I did was a load of, um, I think they worked out to be roughly about 30 mil high uh, Napoleonic figures, um, a little bit larger than your sort of classic 28. Um, I was de debating about whether to shrink them down a bit to make them fit, but I haven't got any any other Napoleons at the moment, so uh, I'm quite happy to leave them as they are at full full height. So uh, I was quite pleased with um, how they came off, all printed nicely, um, and I got um, 25 um, printed in one go. So uh, it does sort of um, make it quite manageable when you want to print off large amounts of uh, troops. So. Um, Basically, this will go in that way, and then just goes in like so. Tighten up those two hand screws, and that's it. Your build plate's done. Uh, next to go in will be the vat. Um, that's the vat there. It's quite a decent size. The only um, downside I think to this vat is it's got like a, um, it's almost like a, a rough cast finish to it. It's not overly rough, but it's enough that if you're using paper towel to clean it, it does sort of break the paper towel up um, and it can be a bit sort of a bit of pain to, to get it off afterwards. Um, basically it goes in that way. And then you can see the little divots in the um, top of the printer where the screen is. And then there is some corresponding pegs that locate into those. So we move that in like so. There we go. And that's it. And then we've got two grub screws which fasten the mill plate into position. There 
we go. And that's it, firmly in place. And then you just need to add your resin and then you're ready to print. Um, one of the features I do really like about this is once you finish your print, you can suspend the build platform on the vat itself. So if we undo that, we'll try and do it one hand, it's a bit tricky. But basically, if you can see along here, there's a lip, and that lip fits into this part of the vat. And that'll basically suspend it almost at 90 degree angle to the vat. So you can take it off, maneuver it around, and then back it into that. And then you can leave it there. And then you, you can quite happily leave it for the, um, the resin to drip off um, into your vat. Um, and it just saves you uh, a lot of arm make having to hold it uh, on some of the other printers uh, where you haven't got that sort of facility. Um, it's, uh, I suppose, a little bit disconcerting when you first uh, look at the build plate um, when it goes into the the resin vat. If I just put it back in position for the moment, because it's completely flat, and a lot of resin does sit on here. Um, but once it's been put in place on top of the vat, um, it's not an issue at all. And I don't think I've uh, spilled any resin um, at all from taking it from that position and putting it down onto the vat. So um, yeah, not as much of a, a pain as I was uh, expecting it to be. Um, like I was saying before, it's, uh, it's well put together, solid as anything. Um, so yeah, build quality, very good. So uh, yeah, I hope this little uh, quick overview of the uh, Quiddy Tech iBox Mano is, uh, have helped you and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, goodbye.